oil leak. I think that's one of the bearing um, seals has gone. So we're going to have to look at replacing that, which means all this spindle, the main spindle, will have to come out, uh, which is going to be a bit of a headache, but never mind, that's how it is. So anyway, so what I'll have to do is have a look online, try and find the manual for this, um, for this lathe, and then go from there. Um, this has been named the Bram or the Bramley, which is um, well it's supplied by a new New Zealand firm. But I know this lathe has several different variants, and um, it was just rebadged when it arrived in New Zealand. So what we'll have to do, we'll just have to have a look and see, and you know, see how we find, you know, if we can find something. So off to the computer. Well, I think I found found the manual, managed to print it all off, and I found a breakdown or a diagram of the um, headstock itself, and the lathe itself was in different variants, and the variants are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight variants. Um, I'll just run through those. Some of you may have heard of these: Lantain, Lux Cut, Honden, Bramley, which is what this one is, Tida, Samson, Hercus. And uh, Jet was another make. So anyway, what I'll do is I'll I'll put the plans on the desk there on the bench, and um, I'll show you the drawing up close, and I'll show you where we're actually leaking and what we need to replace. So going back to the lathe itself, what we've got we've got two bearings, we've got two tapered bearings, one here and one here, and then there's two seals, uh, one seal each side of those bearings, so four seals in total. So what I'm going to do, if I'm going to have to strip it down, I'm going to have to replace all the seals anyway, it makes sense to do them all. So anyway, but we'll have a look at the plan and we'll go from there. Here's the diagram of the headstock, and as you can see there's quite a few bits and pieces within the, what makes up the headstock. And this seal here is the one what's leaking. So we're going to have to strip all this main shaft out to get to that seal. But I'm going to obviously replace all the seals at once. Um, check the bearings. they has got two tapered bearings, one either side. So we'll have a look at those as well and make sure that they're still good. And then obviously reassemble with new seals. I'm going to change, like I said, all the seals. Because it's pointless just changing one because the others are bound to leak at a certain, you know, in, within the near future. So I'll change them all anyway. Here's the main assembly. Uh, what we've got is we've got a tapered bearing in here, one in here, and then there's a seal each side of that one and a seal each side of this one. And this here is the seal what's leaking. But upon closer inspection I've now found a problem and it's not the seal, it's this part here has got a grub screw which locks, the, this is actually a sleeve which goes over the shaft um, to hold, hold the main gear section you know, in sort of in situ and that's got a grub screw in it and the grub screw is loose so obviously the oil has been seeping through in between the shaft and this collar and then it's just you know it's been coming out and flying out inside the machine so what I've done is I've done it up and um, that's now sealed the problem so I haven't got a leaky seal it was literally just this was loose so I'm happy with that I haven't got to strip it all out now but that's going to make the video short so I'll have to uh, think of something else anyway We'll speak to you shortly. As well as working with metal, you know, machining wise and that sort of thing, I also work with timbers and plastics. And here's just a short video of the CNC router. Um, what's happening here is that the router is just going up and down, and I'm resurfacing the spoil board. The spoil board's just just a waste board, which um, when you're machining your workpiece. The cut that goes through the bottom of the workpiece and actually into the spoil board, and that saves the bed of the CNC router from getting damaged. So all I'm actually doing is just resurfacing it. Um, the board can be resurfaced about three or four times before I have to cut a new one, you know, and replace it. So anyway, so that's another short video, and I'll think of something else. In the last part of this week's video I just thought I'd give an update of the workshop and where I'm at now. So 
nothing has changed over this side. We've still got the laser cutter in this corner, which obviously I do a lot of work on uh, with timber and plastic. And then I was going to sort out a, um, a welding station somewhere. I've got to try and fit in uh, together with a welding table. I'm starting to get a few more welding jobs now, so I've got to get sorted on that one and try and find space somewhere. So I'm thinking about probably emptying this hole here and putting a, a metal work, you know, a proper welding table in. And um, so that will fit nicely in there. But then I've obviously got to find space for that. You know, the stuff was sitting there. So we'll have to have a think about that one. Then here we've got the CNC router itself. And that's all boxed in, obviously, for dust. To keep all the dust under control. And the computer which runs that. So that's pretty much the right hand side of the shop. And then obviously the workbench, um, and that's the computer for the laser cutter. And as you can see, the workbench is just a mess. I, you know, I keep trying to tidy it up, but it just ends back up in a mess, so never mind. But here's a small job I've got here, which is just a fishing um, spike, which um, I've just got to re-weld a, a new um, ring on the top here to put the rod in. So that's an aluminium rod spike. So i just got to sort that out for a mate of mine. Then we'll just make our way round. Um, here's the compressor, which I've had to box in because it was too noisy. And, um, you know, so I just boxed it in. It's got all like a baffle in here to try and, you know, sort of keep the noise down. And there's also a fan in there to um, keep it cool, you know, when it's running and that. And then we come down into the metalwork side. And I did think about putting the welding table down this far corner here but the trouble is where you're working with metal machinery there's always oil flying out and of course the oil all sort of lays in, in you know in the mat and that and the last thing you want is to be welding where there's oil you know because you could go to go to bed on a night time and there might have been a piece of weld come off and that's you know smoldering and all of a sudden you've got a fire so I'm trying to keep the um, welding out you know away from this side of the shop so but we've obviously got the miller machine and the lathe in this corner. And then some of you probably watched the videos on the tool cutter grinder. Uh, that's been good. I've been um, sharpening all my tools, what I've got. And we've got a bit of a development on that, which I've got to do for work. We've got some, um, these are for cutting aluminium. And uh, the teeth are starting to go dull. So what I'm going to have to do is try and set this up. So I can um, resharpen these. So it shouldn't be too much of a major. I've just got to get a proper wheel because obviously these are carbide tipped. So and this wheel isn't suitable for that. So I'll get a proper wheel and then I've got to try and sort of mount this in here somewhere and somehow. So I'll have to have a look at that shortly. And we've got the some of the woodwork and stuff over this side as well. I've just got like a, a draw saw here. Um, this has become another sort of tip area where I've got sort of spare, you know, metal and there's all my welding TIG wires. So again, somewhere else which needs a tidy up. Then we come to the bench. This is where I do sort of most of my measuring. I've got a granite um, surface plate under here. So, yeah, that's not too bad. That's probably pretty clean actually to what it is compared normally. And then I just thought I'd dig the engines out and just show you these. Um, some of you may have watched the Jerry Beam, Jerry's Beam engine um, videos. If not, you know, have a look at my uh, channel and you'll see those on there. And these are just a couple of other engines which I've messed around with. Um, this is um, out, of a, out of a boat and it's, it was the River Queen, the boat was called. Um, just another small engine. And then this one was all made out of all aluminium so just just a normal sort of oscillating engine really nothing fantastic but you know i enjoy making this sort of stuff though that's um that's interesting and you know therapeutic and that so so yeah so that's that um what else we got we've got a grinding station here um i'll try and get a better shot of that so that's mounted on this board down here as you can see here, and it's just got a pedestal with a grinder on top. That's just so I can move it around in the shop. Um, 
you know sometimes it lives somewhere else if i'm you know if if i'm working on something and i want to have more space um then we've got a just an old mig welder here which i've probably had oh i don't know 30 years 30 plus years something like that from uh, from the uk and on the grinding i've just actually built these um i should have made a video of these but oh, i just didn't have the time so but yeah just some sharpening rests just to um because the, the ones what come with these you know with these type um, grinders they aren't particularly strong and not very good so i just made some better ones which i can set angles at you know for regrinding um lathe bits and that sort of thing so then here we've just got pretty much a metal storage so i've got all aluminium on the top shelf different grades um, brass in this corner and then we've just got off cuts of steel so Pretty much all of that um, I've got through contacts, um, through stuff what's been thrown out at work, and you've got various things, so that's pretty good. So anyway, so and then we've just got the bandsaw here. That lives in this corner here. And then these are just various cutting oils, uh, and oil for the lathe and the miller machine. So anyway, so yeah, so that's the update of the shock. And... Um, Just give you a shot there. So it's just a double garage, what I'm in at the moment. Um, run out of space, which is typical. Could do with more space, as we all could. So oh, I'll tell you the other thing I've got as well. And um, these arrived shortly. Is um, let me just come over here. I'll show those in a little while. I've actually got some stickers. So... Oh, the light is going to mess around now. Um, yeah, so just some stickers there. So I'll get those out to various people. And the other thing was, which is just what I've just now purchased, are some uh, needle files. But these are quality needle files. These are um, Velorb Swiss made. So they are... I'll try and get the light better. Focus. Yeah, so these are fine finishing files, so um, for doing delicate work, and they're really smooth, um, good quality, lovely files, and that will be do, you know for finishing things on like these engines, you know to put the um, get rid of the you know heavy file marks and that sort of thing. So anyway, that's the last video. So I'll now go back to the computer and I'll upload that to YouTube. Thanks for watching.